Let's look at our next scheduling algorithm, uh, shortest job first. In the shortest job first scheduling algorithm, what we're trying to do is choose the job that has the smallest amount to get done and schedule that one. So here's an example. I have four processes. Let's assume each of these have one thread, and I have one CPU that I need to schedule. The scheduler is running because the context switch has occurred, and it needs to decide which process gets the CPU. Well, if we look at these four processes, you can see that process three only requires two units of CPU execution. So let's schedule that. Process three will get the CPU until time two. Great. Process three is done. Who will run next? Uh, looks like P4 only requires three CPU units, so we'll run P4 next until time five, and so on. Next one up would be P2, which requires four units, so that will take us to time nine. And then finally, P1 gets scheduled all the way till 16 units. Let's calculate some of the metrics we have for this scheduling algorithm. Recall wait time is the amount of time the processes wait in the queue for the CPU. P0, I'm sorry, P1 in this case waits 9. P2 waits for 5 units. P3 got the CPU right away, so no units. And then P4 waited 2 units. We add those up, divide by 4. We have an average wait time of four time units. Let's look at response time. Recall in a non-preemptive system, and in this case, this is non-preemptive because we're allowing, the CP, we're allowing the process to use the CPU for as long as it wants, the wait time and the response time end up being the same. So four total units on average. Turnaround time. Turnaround time is the average amount of time for all the processes from when the process enters the system to when it exits the system. In this case, for P1, it took us from 0 to 16 to get that out of the system. P2 was done at 9. P3 was done at 2. And P4 finished up at 5. So if I add this up, we have 7, 16, we get 32. Let's divide that by 4. Average turnaround time is 8. And finally, uh, throughput. Throughput is the number of jobs per uh, unit time. Here we finished four jobs, and it took us 16 units. So basically one job every four units of time. Now, why would we implement the shortest job first? It turns out that the shortest job first is an optimal way to reduce wait time. If we can get those really short jobs done, the other jobs don't have to wait as long. Now, we have a problem with the shortest job first. The scheduler has no idea how much CPU a job is going to take. It can't look into the future. It doesn't know what the user is going to do. Therefore, it needs to somehow approximate how long um, a job will take. This is done in one of two ways. Sometimes, uh, a running average of past run times for the process is kept, and the thought is, how much CPU you use in the past is how much CPU you use in the future. For instance, if I'm I.O. bound in the past, I'm probably I.O. bound in the future. A more common way is through something called an I.O. boost. The idea here is, if you've done an I.O., you'll probably do another I.O. I.O.s have short CPU bursts in between them, and so the priority of a process or a thread is raised after an I.O. This in itself is not really shortest job first um, meticulously, but it is shortest job first approximated. And most schedulers today use some sort of I.O. boost to push shorter jobs higher up in priority so they get run more frequently. Thank you.